Howdy. Um, okay, a couple things. Number one, I don't have glasses because I can't find them. So I can't see you or myself for that matter. Two, uh, so I have been binge watching some TV recently. And let me see if I can get this going. Uh, there we go. Um, I've been wa binge watching some TV recently and had a an aha moment that I would like to share with you about binge watching TV. So before we do that, I would love if you could let me know what you have been binge watching. And then, uh, so that's the first thing. And okay, so I binge watched two separate shows in the past like three days. One, is this BBC, uh, these, it, it's somewhere between a documentary and a reality TV show. And basically these archaeologists and historians dress up in period wear for the Tudor period and then farm a farm that is um, in England and uh, just like they would have during the Tudor period. Um, and so it's fascinating. It's, uh, I learn a ton about how people used to do things. I love seeing how tied to the seasons people were at that time. And um, I'm surprised at some of the things that they had available to them. I, I didn't realize that people used cookbooks back then. I wouldn't have assumed that um, the average um, like farm wife would know how to read, let alone have a cookbook, but apparently that was fairly common. So what do you know? That was very surprising to me 400 years ago. Um, and they use animals and uh, like breeds of animals as well as types of um, uh, agriculture that they would have used back in the day or as close as they can get to those. Um, so that's just kind of cool to see why they use certain breeds and why they don't anymore and I don't know I just learn a ton and um, the the people who are on that show are super dorky they just you know are so I mean that in a very endearing way they are just like so enthralled with uh, living their passion of history and archaeology and uh, just kind of experiencing what it's like and um, so it's like a really enjoyable way to spend several hours kind of going along the year with these people. On the flip side, I have also been, um, also, let's see. Oh, hey, David, Umbrella Academy. Is it good? I've seen a bunch of people hyping it up, and I'm not sure if it's for me or not. Have you enjoyed it, David? Um, yeah, if you are watching, let me know uh, what you have been binge watching lately and just that you're here. Hi. <laughs> um, so the other thing that I binge watched was uh, called Selling Sunset. And it's about these L.A. Um, real estate agents that are selling multi-million dollar homes. And they're all super like beautiful it looks like there's a lot of plastic surgery going on in that um in that community of people and uh it's frankly um intimidating but also just like fake in a way that does not interest me however um can teacher PD count as binge watching? <laughs> I mean, maybe. <laughs> sure. Um, I think that there's often a, an element of like feeling shame about binge watching for me anyway. Um, I feel like when you are doing um, something for work, you're being productive in a way that binge watching like regular TV is doesn't cause that shame spiral, um, which is sort of where all of this is coming from. I'll get there. Um, I thought Umbrella Academy was creative. Cool. Um, I'll probably end up watching that at some point too then. I like creativity. 
Um, I have a lot of time while I am recovering from ankle surgery, so uh, that has been how I've been spending some of my time. Uh, but I also have plenty of time and plenty of projects that I would rather be spending my time on. Okay, wait, I'll get there. I'm getting ahead of myself. So back to Selling Sunset. So Selling Sunset, these people are not people that I would probably gravitate towards. I'm someone who like likes to think that I would like everybody and generally I pretty much do. There's very few people that I've met in my life that I just don't like. Um, but these would probably not be my first choice of people. And there's a lot of unnecessary drama. Partially, I'm sure that's just because that's the show and they try to create drama for the sake of drama for because it's on television. But I think that um, there's probably an element of real drama. I'll just leave it at that um, as well. So as I was watching these two things, like I was thinking this morning, like, okay, why am I spending so much time doing this when I could be working on my business or just creating something for the sake of creating something like making earrings or pendants or um, art or whatever. And um, I realized that part of the reason that I've been binging is because I miss community. <laughs> like I lost my job in March and it was a beautiful community of people who were invested and involved in the outdoors and I miss that. Um, and then of course COVID. So like I haven't seen anybody except for on Zoom and like an occasional person out in a park. So there's a huge element of like just missing community. And then I was like, okay, but when I watch what kind of community do I want right when I watch the BBC show those are my people <laughs> that's the kind of com that like if I was going to spend a day with the people on the shows that I'm watching would I enjoy it and I am curious whether you would enjoy hanging out with the people that are on the shows that you have been binging because I think that I would super love to just geek out about um, period, I almost said costume, but it's not costume, it's not period costume, it's period clothing, like people were wearing those things. I would like to geek out about that. I would like to geek out about the animals that they're using on the farm. I would like to geek out about growing things and building things and um, the food that they used and cooking on an open hearth and um, just like the kinds of games that they used to play and what it's like to live with no electricity and um, just experiencing the weather on a day-to-day -day basis in a very upfront and personal way without the luxuries of synthetic clothing or uh, you know, air conditioning or heating or anything like that in comparison to the actual people who live right now. Uh, well, I guess the people who are in the BBC thing do live right now, but they don't live like that all the time, but they're still interested in that stuff all the time um, compared to the people who live just a few hours from me in LA and um, are literally selling multi-million dollar houses on a day-to-day -day basis and wearing these really expensive I mean it's fun looking at all their they have costumes they have clothing that are like hook couture um outfits that are just you know they're fun I'm super into that but like it's so over the top I mean I I don't have contacts in I don't have makeup on I don't I haven't taken a shower in a few days like uh, and these people are like getting their hair and manicures done every single day. It's, it blows my mind. Anyway, I'm not sure I would have very much in common with them other than the fact that their, their clothes are fun sometimes. Um, and so that brings me to community in my life and you. <laughs> like I am, David says, attempting to create community during remote school will be a new reality. Yeah, I think it's a really interesting time that we're in right now. Like my niece is going into into high school for the first time. She's 14. She's, she'll be a freshman. And like 
as you know, going into high school is intimidating and you don't know a lot of the people that are in your high school. Um, and you're just sort of like at the, you know, bottom of the totem pole, just like kind of figuring things out. Can you imagine doing that right now where you're not even in person with people and you're trying to like make friends and, and meet people over the internet because you're in a class with them? Like that just seems really interesting from a very high level perspective, but like really stressful <laughs> from a like personal and invested and like, you know, moment to moment perspective. Um, yeah, I, I look forward to hearing more about how you find that to be, David. Um, so I was reflecting on, you know, okay, so I'm spending this time binge watching instead of working on my business. And part of that is because I'm numbing the grief that I'm feeling from losing and missing my community. And I realized when I'm building my business, this is an opportunity for me to build my own community, the people that I want to have around. And that got me really excited and like a little verklempt, just like I, I want to have not necessarily tutor historians, <laughs> although that's great too, um, but um, dating app model. Heather, can you tell me a little bit more about what you mean? I'm not sure I understand what you're saying. Um, and I, I just, oh, that I'm watching different types of um, shows to see what kind of community I want. Is that what you mean? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Dating app. Yeah, so I'm like previewing the kinds of people that I want in my life. And um, yeah, so in, in I'm, I'm putting forth a very strong intention right now and just kind of making it known that like the community that I want in my life are people who are there to help build and um, sow and reap what we sow together um, in a you know whether literally in gardens or farms or um, metaphorically and people who have each other's backs and people who can kind of like help each other hang up uh, posters on the wall and stand back and let them let the other person know whether it's let's see I'm, I'm getting all backwards and stuff whether it's straight or not this one actually fell down last night and I haven't been able to put it back because of my ankle Nick's coming back he can help me tonight yeah see he's a part of my community that I want because he's gonna help me fix this poster <laughs> so yeah I um I I want people in my community who are invested in um, learning and curiosity and kindness. And um, I want people in my community who are intelligent and take, take, a, take the time to be compassionate with themselves and take the time to um, offer help when they see that other people need help and aren't consumed with uh, money. I don't think money is bad. I think money is fine. Um, I think power has issues. <laughs> I, I feel much more drawn to an egalitarian situation than one of I'm better than you or you're not good enough or anything like that. Anyway, um, that was my little thing that I learned about myself and um, that I wanted to share with you guys. I'm, if you're watching this, I'm pretty sure I'm psyched that you're here and that you are a part of my community. So thank you for being you. And let me know um, what you want to see more of in your community um, and whether this uh, reverberated for you at all and whether you can kind of yeah I'm really curious if the things that you're watching right now represent the types of community that you want in your life um, I, I also recently just kind of like adding to that metaphor I also recently binge watched Better Call Saul which I think is a fantastic show I really really enjoyed it it's very smart characters are 
really um, complex, and I thought it was very well done. But I don't want those people in my community either. I mean, maybe it's okay if they're in my, you know, in my periphery. <sighs> I think we can do better. I think that we can be kinder and um, more creative and more um, driven towards building something positive than a lot of the TV that's out there right now because it's drama for drama's sake. I think that uh, we are capable of better and that's what I want to build around me. Love you guys so 